Welcome to Nursing Simplified, the smart way to survive nursing school. In today's episode, we are going to talk about my tips and tricks that you can use to answer select all that apply questions on any exam quickly, easily, and correctly every single time. Make sure to stay around till the end while we work through some of these types of questions so you can be a master. I would love for you to stick around for future videos, so take a moment to hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. Let's talk about what select all that apply questions are looking for from the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. The National Council of State Boards of Nursing, or NCSBN, is the nonprofit organization that develops the NCLEX exams. So, what does the NCSBN say about select all that apply questions? Well, firstly, you need to know that the terminology for select all that apply is changing. These types of questions are now being referred to as multiple response items. The NCSBN's definition of a multiple response item is, multiple response items require a candidate regardless of the number of options to select a single response, multiple responses, or all responses as correct to answer the item. So what they're telling us is that there can be one correct response or answer or multiple correct responses or answers. And I'm going to interject here and say that it would be very unlikely that a multiple response item would have only one correct response. So just keep that in mind. So what happens when we come across one of these questions on an exam? Well, first we panic. And then we look at all the answers and compare them to one another while trying to determine which might apply to the question. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is not the way. My first tip is not to look at these items as select all that apply or multiple response. Relax, take a breath, and think of each of these questions as a gift. Okay, now you think I've lost my mind, but I haven't. Look at it this way. Multiple response items give you one scenario and then a series of true, false statements. And true, false questions are much easier than multiple response, right? So how do we do this? Acing these types of questions is easier than you think when you use my four easy steps. Identify the topic, ask if the statement pertains to the topic, decide if the statements are true or false, and then decide if the question was looking for true or false answers. Let's break each of these steps down. Step one is to identify the topic. Every test question or item has a number of parts. To learn more about this, watch my video on the top 10 NCLEX test strategies linked in the description below. We refer to the entire question and answer group as an item. The stem is the part of the question that tells you what is actually being asked. The options are all of the listed answers. In multiple response items, these are true-false statements. Within the options, we have distractors, which are the wrong answers, and then of course we have the correct answers. When we identify the topic, we decide what the question is actually asking, so we can systematically rule in or rule out answers. We can't answer a question if we don't know what it's asking. And that's why this is the first step. Next, we start looking at each statement and decide if it relates to the topic. We need to look for clues in the topic. If the topic is about preventing complications, then the statement has to have a nursing intervention that prevents complications. If the stem of the question is asking for a symptom, then the statement has to include a symptom. STEM asking for patient teaching? Well, sure enough, if the statement doesn't include some form of teaching, we have to eliminate it. 
So we can rule out whatever doesn't match right away. And the further we whittle down the number of possible correct statements, the better. We'll put this into context when we go through our example questions. Step three is deciding if each statement is true or false. We need to look at each statement individually and make a decision before we can move on to the next statement. Don't compare the choices or it can get confusing. One trick is to start with the first statement while covering the rest with a piece of paper. Decide if the statement is true or false and write it down. Then move the paper down so you can see only the next statement in order. Don't go back to the question until you have marked all the statements as true or false. And don't change your decisions. Stick with your gut. Lastly, we will go back to the question to double check and decide if we're looking for true or false statements. We do this by looking at the stem of the question. There are two types of stems that you can see in an item, positive stem questions and negative stem questions. Positive stem questions ask the test taker to choose the statements that are true. In these questions, you will see terms such as appropriate, best, and correct. Negative stem questions ask the test taker to choose the statements that are false. In these questions, you will see terms such as accept, not, least, avoid, contraindicated, and a big one is the phrase need for further teaching. And you'll see what I mean when we go through our practice questions. Now let's take a look at some practice questions and apply this method to answer them. The nurse is caring for a 62 year old male patient with lung cancer. The patient has nausea and vomiting that is associated with his chemotherapy treatment and is now receiving TPN, total parenteral nutrition, through a central line. Which of the following interventions are appropriate to decrease the risk of infection? So let's go through our steps. Our first step is to identify the topic. We can see right off the bat that we are looking for statements that have interventions. We want to decrease the risk of infection. So we should be looking for statements that include interventions that decrease the risk of infection. This patient has a central line through which they are getting TPN. And that seems important because TPN and central lines are an infection risk to the patient. What about his diagnosis of lung cancer and the fact that he has nausea and vomiting from his chemotherapy? Well, that information doesn't have anything to do with risk of infection or the interventions that we need to implement, so we don't need to know that. Information like this is often included in questions, and it can make the question seem more complicated. So our job is to simplify it, and I think we have. So we are looking for interventions that decrease the risk of infection in a patient receiving TPN through a central line and we have now successfully identified the topic. Our next step is to decide if each statement relates to the topic. So our topic is to choose interventions that decrease the risk of infection in a patient with TPN through a central line. We can eliminate anything that isn't an intervention or anything that has to do with decreasing the risk of infection. Let's take a look at these statements quickly to see if there are any we can eliminate right away. One has to do with cleaning the central line port. Two is to assess the necessity of the line. Three is to administer Tylenol for fever. Four is to make sure the line is patent before use. Five is about hanging fresh TPN. And six is about changing the dressing. If we look at all of these statements, we can pretty quickly determine that they all include interventions. So we can't eliminate any for that reason. So let's look a little bit deeper and see if they reduce the risk of infection. When I take another glance, I notice that statement number three 
administer Tylenol and apply cool washcloth to the patient's head if temperature is above 101. Well, that is definitely something that we might do, but does it have anything to do with preventing infection? No. So we can eliminate statement number three. We have now successfully eliminated a statement, which gives us one less to deal with. In step three, we are going to look at each statement and decide if it's true or false. Remember, we are going to look at each statement a bit more in depth here, one at a time. Number one, clean the access port with an appropriate antiseptic prior to use. This is an intervention that we perform to reduce the risk of infection from a central line. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this as true. Number two, assess the necessity of the line every shift and request an order to discontinue when no longer needed. While this is an intervention we use to decrease the length of time a central line is in place, the longer it is in place, the higher the risk for infection. We want it out as soon as it isn't needed any longer. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this as true. Number four, ensure that the line flushes easily and that there is blood return prior to use. Now, I left this here so that you can see, even if we didn't catch this one in the previous step, we would catch it here. So do we make sure that a central line flushes and has blood return prior to use? Yes, we do. Does that help to prevent infection? No, it doesn't. So we're going to eliminate it here. Number five, ensure that a new bag of TPN is hung at least every 24 hours with new tubing. Yes, we do this. Does it help to prevent infection in a central line? Yes, it does. TPN has a lot of sugar in it and bacteria love sugar. So by hanging a new bag every 24 hours, we get rid of the risk of bacterial growth that might have started to feast on that sugar and we start fresh. We're gonna go ahead and mark this as true. Number six, replace the central line dressing if soiled, wet, or dislodged. If the dressing is dirty or loose, bacteria can enter the bloodstream where the line inserts into the skin. So this is an intervention that we use to prevent infection in a central line. We absolutely do. So we're going to mark this as true. And with that, our third step is complete. We've marked all of our statements as true and false. Now we move on to our last step, which is double checking to see if we're looking for true or false statements. Remember, we're looking for those positive versus negative stems here. So now is the time where we look back at the question and we don't see any of those keywords or phrases that indicate this one has a negative stem. In fact, if we reworded our topic, it might read, which of the following are true about interventions we would use to prevent infection in a patient that has TPN through a central line? So with that, we know that all of our statements that we marked as true are the correct answers. So our correct answers are one, two, five, and six. Our distractors have been eliminated and we have gotten the correct answers for this question. Let's work on our next example. The nurse is caring for a 76 year old female with congestive heart failure. This patient has been ordered to take furosemide, 40 milligrams, once daily by mouth in the morning. Which of the following statements made by the patient indicate a need for further teaching? So let's identify the topic. Our patient has congestive heart failure. She is on furosemide, which is a diuretic. And we're looking for statements that indicate the patient needs further teaching. So we could reword this question as, what is false about congestive heart failure and furosemide? And then we will have successfully identified our topic. 
Now we will determine if each statement relates to the topic. Let's look at our statement options quickly. Number one, I will make sure to keep my legs below the level of the heart. Number two, I will weigh myself every morning in my underwear using the same scale. Number three, I will limit my fluid intake to four liters per day. Number four, I will take my furosemide as soon as I notice any swelling in my feet. Number five, I will notify the physician if I begin to feel any shortness of breath. And number six, I will increase the amounts of prepackaged foods in my diet so I can save energy by not having to cook my meals from scratch. So just quickly looking, these options have things to do with things like diet, fluid intake, medication, symptoms. They all have something to do with CHF being treated with furosemide. So I don't see that we can really eliminate any of these at this stage. We'll leave all of them and complete this step. Now we will decide if each statement is true or false. Statement number one, I will make sure to keep my legs below the level of the heart. So we ask ourselves, is this something I would teach my patient with CHF to do? No, we wouldn't. We would encourage them to keep their legs above the level of the heart. So this statement is false. Statement two, I will weigh myself every morning in my underwear using the same scale. Is this something we would teach our patient? Yes, we want them to keep an accurate weight log and weighing in at the same time on the same scale in the same clothes every day will keep that consistent. So this statement is true. Statement three, I will limit my fluid intake to four liters per day. Is this something that we would teach our patient? No. Typically, we would be looking at two liters or less per day. So this statement is false. Statement four, I will take my furosemide as soon as I notice any swelling in my feet or legs. Would we teach this? No. Furosemide is to be taken routinely and on a schedule, not just as needed. We will mark this as false. Statement five, I will notify my physician if I begin to feel shortness of breath. Would we teach this? Yes. Shortness of breath is a sign that they may be overloaded with fluid and have an exacerbation. This is true. Statement six, I will increase the amounts of prepackaged foods in my diet so I can save energy by not having to cook my meals from scratch. Is this something we would teach our patient? No. Although we want our congestive heart failure patients to pace themselves so they don't get too tired, using prepackaged foods will load them up on sodium and create more fluid retention. This is a false statement. We have now successfully marked all of our statements as true or false. Now that we have made decisions about each statement, we want to go back and double check to see if we were looking for true or false statements. During our review of the question, we see that it asks, what statements made by the patient indicate a need for further teaching? And this was that key phrase that I was talking about earlier in the video. You'll see this quite often. And what it is asking us is to identify the statements that the patient made that are incorrect and prompt us to do additional teaching. So we could reword it as, what is false about congestive heart failure and furosemide? That means we can eliminate statement two and statement five because those were the ones we marked as true, or the ones the patient got right. We have now successfully eliminated our distractors. That leaves us with the remaining four statements. And after going through our process, we have correctly answered our question. And now for a quick recap. 
Don't panic when you see these types of questions. Just relax and think of them as true-false statements. Make sure you determine what the question is asking by picking out the key words in the question and correctly identifying the stem. Look at each statement individually and determine what it has to do with the question. And if it's not relevant, then eliminate it right off the bat. Decide if each statement is true or false. Determine if the question was asking for true or false statements and eliminate distractors. And stick to the process and don't change your answers. And there you have it. Today we talked about the systematic way to answer multiple response items correctly every time. Congratulations, you now have the tools to master Select All That Apply, also known as multiple response items. Now go slay that exam. Remember, you are beautiful, you are needed, you are loved, you are strong, and most of all, dear friends, you are enough. If you liked this video or you learned something, please take a moment to click that like button and subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss what's coming next. Now go out there and be the amazing nurse that you were meant to be. And don't forget, nursing is a work of heart. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.